Today on Tim and IT Jams, we're joined by Mike Nichols, who is the Vice President of Product Management and Security at Elastic. As the leading platform for search-powered solutions with solutions in enterprise search, observability, and security, Elastic helps organizations find what they need faster, keep mission-critical applications running smoothly, and protect against cyber threats. Mike joins us today to tell us more about Elastic and some of the global brands it works with. He'll also be sharing his perspective on cybersecurity and its biggest challenges today. Thank you for coming along, Mike, and welcome to the Jam. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to speak to you today. So what is Elastic and what does it do? So it's, it's a good question. You know, Elastic, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we really believe that sort of the foundation of most problems is data. And so we start our life really as a data analytics solution uh, that naturally surfaced itself in search, you know, how can I power search for applications? How can I power search for even things like your ride share applications? Uh, but we realized quickly that that's also a, a challenge people faced in, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the observability or sort of keeping my systems up and operational, as well as definitely in security, where you know we're sort of inundated with a massive amount of data from many different systems now. And you know you might have heard terms like you know the the needle in the haystack or the signal in the noise. Uh, you know, really trying to get that at scale today requires a massive amount of analytics. And Elastic's always been really, really uh, kind of the go-to place for the speed of which we can solve these problems. We like, you know, instead of getting doing a search and going and get dinner, you get a search, you get the answer back in seconds. And that's really kind of core to how we power most of our solutions. And what brands does Elastic currently work with globally? What kind of problems are you solving for them? Yeah, you know, what I love about Elastic is, so I spent a lot of time in my life, before I was in the uh, sort of vendor world, I was I was uh, U.S. public sector, so U.S. Army, and I worked in some, some government uh, security operation centers. Then I moved to the vendor space, and in both of those worlds, uh, you know, I, I kind of, security was sort of a, a classist place, meaning you had to have a certain budget for certain security teams to talk to you. What I love about Elastic is Elastic delivers to all people. We actually have solutions that go all the way down to just use it at your house. So you can use it, you know, download it yourself uh, up through, you know, commercial and even into very large enterprise uh, companies. And, and that's pretty awesome because what it really does is allows us to push security down to everyone that needs it. Uh, so with that, though, we serve a whole vast array of people across the entire world and in many different segments. But just quick examples, you know, people that I that I think have some really excellent use cases, especially in security. Uh, people like Uber, who were using Elastic for the ride sharing, you know, how do I map you to the driver and then realize that we have a really awesome way to power their security uh, solution as well, sort of being that core operating system layer of the security operation center. Um, you know, other people like, like, you know, WePay or T-Mobile looking at us from the sort of uh, the observability side. How do I ensure my systems are operational because the business impact of a system that goes down is of course dollars that impact the business. And that's really critical uh, that they're online and operational at all times. But you know, even here in Australia where I am visiting for the week and having a, a great time, you know, many uh, great examples of different types of organizations. You know, people like ASB Bank using us for security. Uh, you know, people like domain groups using us for observability. You know, there's a, a great array of, of customers. And then of course, there's a whole array of public sector or federal customers that I won't speak to by name, but uh, you know, we really power the heart of a lot of those operations as well, whether it's in the US, uh, you know, here in Australia, in the UK, and many other places, a lot of the public sector or federal uh, companies or organizations rely on us as well. Again, primarily for that fact of bringing that data together and, and searching through it at a speed that they could not get with other solutions. Awesome. And as the vice president and product lead for Elastic Security, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in the current cyber security landscape globally and in Australia? Yeah, the the, the good news. I, I had a CISO dinner last night, and uh, I mean, I said maybe it's good news, maybe it's uh, not good news. I don't know, but the trends seem to be very similar in, across the world. Uh, you know, which means that at least you're not alone in the in the challenges you're facing. Uh, but one of the first ones, of course, that comes top of mind is that digital transformation that happened a few years ago or was accelerated a few years ago because of COVID. Uh, we saw a rapid increase of companies who had to get their systems online and uh, online fast at massive scale. We think of grocery vendors that were all of a sudden had to be in the game of having a grocery app that could deliver to your house because people were no longer going to the grocery store. And so that digital transformation really drove the need for uh, people to apply search at that layer, definitely keep the systems operational. You know, if your grocery app goes down, they're going to go to the next grocery app, right? There's not a lot of loyalty there to stick on the one that they're on. And then of course, security also, you know, people were moving qu so quickly to the cloud that uh, security was, it was always thought of, but sometimes it was uh, maybe deprioritized because keeping the business running was, was the core priority. So that's a core trend we see and people are still getting their hands around that. 
Uh, you might have heard terms like, like you know, the, there is no perimeter or the perimeterless environment now. We have distributed employees. The employees are working in their houses. You have so many different SaaS applications that you're utilizing for your business now, whether it's messaging and email and documentation. Yeah, and you also have this massive cloud ecosystem or infrastructure now supporting your client base. And so there isn't sort of this monolithic place you can go sit off a tap and understand what's happening. You have to get data from all these disparate places. So that sort of leads to the second challenge we see everywhere, which is data silos. Uh, data silos, both in the organization itself, where you know maybe my my IT data is kept over here, my security data is kept over here, but even within the the sort of the smaller teams, they silo in fragmented segments as well, right? Here's the person who's responsible for sort of the host base information, and that's in this silo over here, and the network data is maybe over here. And the challenges that we face for one having to be able to answer the question of did it happen? You know, look at the the log4j attack uh, or, or vulnerability that was a, a few years back. And, you know, the simple question of, hey, were we vulnerable? Were we exposed? Answering that was, well, first, where do I go find that data? You know, which system has it, right? So oh, then when you find the system, who, who knows how to use that system? Where's the expert that actually knows how to log in and figure that out? And so the, the story of sort of building a centralized data fabric became really uh, kind of key in many areas. How do I pick that single view together where I can bring in data from many different sources and I can answer the question, I can have assurance to the question of did this ever happen and if it did happen what did it do um, i know unfortunately there were a few large breaches here last year that had that similar challenge right where not only was the, the breach happen but what citizens were affected and you know you can't tell them six months from now you need to tell them tomorrow uh, what might have happened so that ability to build that centralized data fabric remove the silos and have that information be available uh, i think is, is really really critical and I guess a third uh, large challenge we've seen, and it's it's been a challenge in my entire life, 20 plus years in this business, but it, uh, it continues to move faster. I like to say that or joke that, you know, this sort of openness or the open nature or the share, shareability in the attacker landscape is much faster than the openness and shareability in defense. Uh, you know, in the defensive side, we kind of keep ourselves close hold, but you look at the adversary landscape and you you know, look at the war in Ukraine as an example where we see a sophisticated wiper attack uh, go out and target these uh, these systems that doesn't keep itself within the borders. Cybersecurity knows no country borders. So as soon as that was out, as soon as that technology was available, we saw criminal organizations quickly pick up that technology and then utilize that in their attacks uh, across sort of crime of opportunities. And so that instantly spread everywhere. Uh, and we see that constantly where these nation state developed, you know, highly sophisticated attacks uh, once they're used. They're just disseminated down to the criminal groups to take advantage of it. And now you have sort of nation state type attacks targeting you, even if you're a, a commercial company or even a small medium business. And so, again, that idea of pushing security down is so critical because we have to democratize security. It has to become core of every one of our businesses. It can't just be at that sort of enterprise or fortune level of companies. And when it comes to security strategies, you've kind of got preventative and you've got responsive. What are the kind of common challenges that security teams face when they're putting those sorts of things in place? I think a key challenge, or maybe the key challenge, and it maybe somewhat fits into the previous question as well, is the lack of personnel, right? Um, when you want to move into a proactive type response, and reactive is, is sometimes all you can do because you don't have the people, you don't have the tooling or the processes to put in place to say, we're going to do more and actually go look for problems, right? You, you set up sort of the... You set up that endpoint defense technology, and when it alerts, it pops a, uh, an email on your phone, and you go and take a look at it. Right, that's the reactive type of approach to security. And you know, as we've seen again in many cases, as I mentioned, like 4 j earlier, but many other examples of of where we want to be more proactive. You know, are we vulnerable? Can we get in front of an adversary's attack? Don't just tell me after it happens, but can I know about you know, great uh, new processes that are out there like purple teaming, where we have people come in and and pretend they're the, the adversaries and and help us learn. To get that in, into that kind of proactiveness, you have to have the people that can do the proactiveness for you. And a lot of times in many organizations, they lack that personnel. You know, we, you'll hear about the skills gap challenge constantly, 30 million plus people across the world, you know, sort of predicted in the next few years as a gap for doing this business. So we're also big believers that, uh, you know, I, I think that business to business applications, you know, the typical, you know, things that businesses sell others, the, it, the experience has been pretty terrible. Uh, they're very utilitarian. And I think you have to bring a consumer-based approach, uh, an elegant or intuitive-based approach to everything you build, uh, even in complex world like cybersecurity, because the workforce is coming from a place where they're used to using the, their phone apps and other things that are you know fun to use, and where you don't have to get a training or certification to use your iPhone app, right? You just it's just there. 
Uh, and the, you know, we want to bring more people into cybersecurity. We can't silo it just inside of IT. It needs to become a discipline that many different people across the business understand. And the best way to accomplish that is an investment into user experience, an investment that allows us to say, you know, others can can join the fold here. This isn't some secret thing that only I know how to use that I've trained and certified my life into. Uh, how can they get the, you know, the tool really just be a tool that they can utilize and they bring their expertise to the business to that, right? How can you focus more on the risk and the business impact and less on, oh, well, you want to search in this product, you have to use an underscore and an asterisk or whatever over here. That it, that should become intuitive and you should be able to train more people on the sort of practice of cybersecurity, the discipline of cybersecurity, not become a vendor expert uh, in cybersecurity. And cybersecurity often relies on obscurity as its primary form of defense. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the the days of uh, you know, in, in my security operations center days, you know, even even sharing internal to the team, there's you know things you would sort of block off, and we can't say that, we can't say this. Uh, I mentioned earlier, sort of the openness in the adversary world is far faster than the than the defensive world. So you think about an attack, you know, like we just mentioned a few times now, the Log4j attack. You think about when that came out. How many people hours or people years did we spend where every single company across Australia probably had a security team that was saying, well, we need to figure out how to find this. Let's build a detection for this. Let's build an investigation for this. And they're all doing the same thing, this, find the same problem. But because we don't have a way to share that across the environment, we, you know, imagine how much time we'd save if we, if we did that once and shared that to everybody. And then you could spend your time doing the detective work, the analytic work. You know, Did it happen? What was the impact of my business if it happened? And how do I clean it up? And not the data sifting work of, well, you know, how do I write the query to find this thing? How do I write the detection logic to find this thing? So we're a big believer in Elastic of just completely going open. In fact, early days in uh, when we developed our security analytics, you know, SIM platform, we took the entire rule set and put it completely in the open. It's in GitHub, publicly available. Anybody can look at it and access it. We get a huge amount of community contributions to it, which is fantastic. And you know, we've also gotten the sort of FUD, uh, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt around it of, oh, wait, doesn't the adversary now know what you do? And, you know, I can tell you from doing this job on the other side, they know, they already know. They, they have The adversary has every product. They just purchased it or stole it. They know what we do probably better than many, many of the vendors know what they do. Uh, the only thing hiding that information does is hurt the defender, right? Makes the defender have to, you know, go and build that rule a hundred times across the, the industry instead of just doing it once. And so we believe that, you know, that, that idea of sharing that information out is critical. And then the other benefit of that is that it's the idea of the, the rising tide lifting all boats, that when we do that, you know, companies that can't invest heavily into a security operations team or a fusion cell to develop this, these rule sets get the benefit of a bunch of other people working on it. That community effect of, hey, if I'm, if I'm the IT director, I don't even have a security team for my small business, but I see that someone shared with me a way to find this threat that was making the news. I can just go look for that. I don't have to go learn how to build a rule or what even that looks like. And so I, I think that's really the only way to get in front of us is to get openness so that we can make our teams move faster, accelerate the people we have, but also, again, push this cybersecurity down. Uh, if we protect the enterprise only, that doesn't help anybody because the commercial and the small to medium businesses that are compromised, those are the systems that are being utilized uh, to attack other companies. Those are the, you know, the accounts that are being used to, to host the spear phishing emails that you get. We have to defend everyone. It has to be a discipline that pushes down to the world. It has to be democratized. It can't just be available to that enterprise layer of the world. Well, it's been awesome to hear more about Elastic and to get your perspective on the current cybersecurity landscape, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us on The Jam. We look forward to hearing more from Elastic soon. Thanks for hosting me. Appreciate it.